drivers, start your engines. So let's see if everyone can get through the chicane in one piece. We are rolling and racing at the Autodrome Most and immediately going three wide. Sebastian Blake Molen gets a really good launch from the second row of the grid. Tries to get in amongst it, but it's going to be his Team Blake Molen teammate that leads. Oh, and contact at the first hurdle. Three into one, simply didn't go. Tobias Downhowers in the gravel. Anthony Kumpen, Sebastian Blake Molen. Uh, making contacts and Liam Hazemans as well. Liam Hazemans has his bonnet up in front of his windscreen. Green flag flying. We are racing once again. And I think that Vladimir Osiortis was caught napping because through has gone Martin Dubek. Dubek with a fairy tale beginning to this race. Home nation hero, the Czech driver, is running in second place. Bear in mind, he started the race on row six in 12th position. And he's up in second place now. We begin lap three of 17 with Vittorio Garelli 2.4 seconds up the road. There's Gianmarco Urkeli with a very, very second-hand Chevrolet Camaro. He rejoins the race a lap down. Siorzis, we didn't see exactly how it happened, but we did see um, the conclusion of the move as Dubek launched the car away that little bit quicker. Now, Vladimir Osiortis is plotting his way back past into second position. Anthony Kumpen is, of course, right there with them. Uh, just a, a few car lengths back, maybe half a second, seven tenths of a second back. Here comes Anthony Kumpen then in the slipstream behind Dubek, and it looks as though Kumpen's got the straight line speed edge. Later on the brakes there, very, very self-assured braking there from Anthony Kumpen. Got that car stopped just in time. And Kumpen moves his way up to fourth position, so Dubek after the high of being in second place after the uh, full course yellow restart. He's now back down to P5, but to be honest with you, even P5, I think, is probably more than he expected out of this race after his uh, qualifying session where he only managed 12th place. Battle for third position. Comes across the start-finish line once again. Lap 11 of the race. And Anthony Kumpen really late on the brakes. Again, Kumpen seems to have a mighty amount of faith in that brake pedal. Gets himself past the admittedly quite wounded Lucas Lasser number 64. Into third position goes Anthony Kumpen. Oh, and into second place has gone Anthony Kumpen. And I believe that may have happened down at turn one in the back of shot. I apologise, I was watching the back markers there at the foreground of shot. But in the background, I think Kumpen has managed to get his way past uh, Siortsis down into the second, uh, uh, into the first chicane. Meanwhile, here's your winner, Vittorio Garelli. Out of the final corner, he secures yet another win in Euronascar Pro. Vittorio Garelli making amends for misfortunes in days gone by, taking another win there. Anthony Kumpen taking second place, and Lucas Lasser managed to get to P3 there, according to my timing screen. Hopefully things go a little bit easier this time compared to what we had in Euronascar Pro earlier on. The pin is pulled and we are underway. It looks like a good start for Siortis, a good start for Jeffro as well, but he does not dive to the middle. Maybe not wanting to instigate a three-wide scenario after what we saw earlier today. Oh, but Alberto Nasca goes 
deep into the corner. I think Jufro did as well. Uh, both of them go through the chicane that is um, made to stop shortcuts. And, well, they did go through that chicane. However, they didn't lose too much time. Vladimir Ossiortis is your leader. Oh, and contact further back in the pack. Big contact further back. That's a 65 of Romagnoli. Mounting the bonnet of Paolo Valeri there. After a bit of a delay, we are going to go back to green flag racing then. And it's Vladimir Ossiortis who leads. But Jill Linster is right there with him. Jill Linster... Goes to the outside line on Vladimir Ossiortis side by side as they go into the first chicane. It's Jufro in third place. It's side by side for P4 between Schorber and Davidson. And Schorber going wide there. Everyone else, I think, just about making it through okay. The top two breaking away, stretching their legs as Davidson and Jufro go side by side into turn six. Paul Jufro closing in. On the Marco Schtipp Motorsport number 48. Dives to the inside later on the brakes. And the RDV competition driver in the number three gets through into third position. Martin Dubek, meanwhile, pressuring Roberto Benedetti. So it is Benedetti holding off Dubek. But will he be able to take the defensive line into the first corner? He arches the car to the right to try and do just that. But Dubek a lot later on the brakes. Is he too ambitious? No, he's just the right amount of ambitious. Gets through. Dubeck in the tow here behind Melvin de Groot. So Dubeck looking to the inside line. And again, later on the brakes there. He's clearly found a braking marker that he trusts into that first corner. Had a look to the inside, but couldn't quite get it done on that occasion. He's looming large, however, in the mirrors. Look at the speed that Dubek carried there through turn 13. That should set him up nicely for a move at 15. He looks to the inside. Is he later on the brakes? He was fractionally, and Melvin de Groot realizes that battle is one that he's not going to win. The Hendrix Motorsport number seven car continues its charge then. The 2021 Euro NASCAR two champion Martin Dubek moves up into sixth position. Meanwhile, Alberto Nasca down in 19th position. Has not made up any places at all. One minute and one seconds off the pace. I don't know why Nasca is quite so far back. He was on the back of that safety car queue. The car looks to be okay, but he's 15 seconds away from his closest competition, Ariana Casoli. ultimate corner of the lap there is a car and it's the 18 unfortunately Claudia Remeggio Capelli beached in the gravel Davidson then down to seventh place and Dubeck side by side with Melvin de Groot for fifth position heading towards turn 13 of the lap can Melvin do anything to stave off Dubeck. He got a slightly better run out of turn 10. And by the time they got to the next serious braking zone at turn 13, it just about paid off for him. Oh, and contact between the two of them, sending Melvin de Groot into the grass. And I fear into the barrier as well, unfortunately for Melvin. That was a high speed collision. Very high speed collision. Martin Dubeck tried to dive to the inside, but Melvin de Groot went the same direction at the same time. It's Vladimir Ossiortis who comes across the line to secure yet another win in at the Euro NASCAR 2 season of 2023, and he extends his championship lead. Jeffro takes second. Patrick Schorber just about holds on to third place ahead of Jill Linster. Dubeck in fifth. Davidson in sixth. 